practice? Who should be doing all that? To whom? You to yourself. I have looked for myself for years and have found no trace of anything but an object. Why was that? The question is the same. Who is looking for what? And the answer? That which I was looking for was this which was looking. So you have found yourself after all. Never. How so? There was no thing to be found. The sort was the searcher, and the searcher was the sort, and nothing of the kind existed as an object. And so? That was the end of the search. There was nothing further to look for, nor need for any looking. What then? That is the answer to all questions. All questions? Absolutely all. The final answer to all questions. The complete answer. I do not understand. It cannot be understood. Understanding is the result of a process which uses mind objectively. Understanding is phenomenal, personal and dead. Then one should not try to understand? Mind is noumenal, impersonal, subjective. That is why it is all that you are. All that anything is. And no thing itself. I am just that. No, you are neither that, nor this. One just is, and doesn't know it. Everything just is, and doesn't know it. Such is what one finds when one wakes up. Ask the awakened.
Is the chief hindrance the identification with the body? The I am the body idea? Any identification with any object is an absolute hindrance because I am totally devoid of objectivity or any trace element thereof. Can one seek to understand what one is or what one is not? I can only know what I am not. What I am is unknowable, for I am it. And if I could know it, I would thereby be an object. Therefore, there is no it, and I am not. You are and you are not. I neither am nor am not. There is no I. If there were, I would be an object. I am not at all, in any conceivable way, manner, state, form or dimension. For the same reason, there is no such thing as reality, truth, absolute, self, consciousness, mind, dharmakaya, or any other concept, whatever. But there is, I am not. There is no I am not either. There is no thing, positive or negative. Not even presence or absence. Every sentient being is I, and so can know this. For being and knowing are identical. But there is no being or knowing. There is no thing nothing been or known. All I can be or know is that. No thing. Then what are objects? Objects are I, the whole sensorially perceptible, knowable and imaginable universe is I. So you are the universe? 
Not at all. The universe is I. Pantheism maintains that God is the universe. God is not the universe. The universe is God. What is the difference? In physics, none. In metaphysics, absolute difference. The difference between subject and object. The universe is not the subject of God. Then the universe is both God and you? Certainly not. It may be both God and I. So you are God. Not at all. God is an object, your concept. And so are you. As for me, this which I am is not any thing at all. Then nor is God. Every concept is a thing but as such is not. Neither God nor I is as an object. You say that the universe is you. How do you know that? I said that the universe is I. You can say it. Every beetle, every sentient being can say it. What else is there that it could be? Where else is there for it to be? Movement space and time are only concepts. There can only be I and I am not, no matter who says it. Then why are the beetle, you and I, different? We are not different. We only appear different. Numinally, we are one. As phenomena, as one another's objects, we sensorially perceive and mentally interpret one another as the beetle, you and I. But as what we are, we are not. So we are not, either phenomenally or numinally. Phenomenally, we are not as entities. Numinally, we are not as concepts. 
which also are objects. What we are is not entity or concept. Objectivity of any kind. Therefore, we cannot either think or say that we are anything. For that is what we are not. Then can we not know ourselves at all? We cannot know ourselves at all, for we are not anything to be known. We can only be ourselves, ourselves being what we are. And how is that to be done? It is not to be done. It is. Everything is as it is. Is there any authority for that? Yes, indeed, but as it is liable to be misunderstood, it has usually been implied rather than stated. Then regarding ourselves as something is the hindrance. That alone is bondage. And the remedy? To cease regarding the universe as an object, since it is I. Objects as entities, since there are none. Yourself and others as such. For neither ever was. To look in the right direction, look up and look in, where there is no longer any direction at all. where no longer is there anything to be measured from any where, nor any looking. Who then is there to be bound? To what then could there be any binding? So that is liberation? Liberation for whom? From what? There has never been either. And then you see that. It is as it is. That is all you can say. And they are Mahashi's words. Which means that there is no entity or object at all as such. Not even ourselves. 
Not even I? Not even not I. How could there be? Think, man, think. Does not thought unite with intuition in this ultimate insight? How could there be? Ha ha ha. That is the answer. The answer which dualistic language cannot give. Which can only be aperceived numinally. That is, by intuitive apprehension. Heartily I agree. Ha 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 ha. But is laughter the correct reaction to this understanding? Many have laughed. Some have cried. A few have prayed. Bodhidharma told the emperor that there was no doctrine and nothing holy about it. But the emperor was too earnest a man even to understand. And that is all it is? One monk is reported as having said that too. The phenomenal reaction is correct as laughter. But the final noumenal living of it is usually described as bliss. And it expresses itself as universal benediction. <laughs>